What's the worst thing about being in prison besides being in prison? The voting rights, that's what. Even though Labour announced they would change the law to allow prisoners serving less than three years the right to vote, they stopped short of reinstating it completely, bravely going against the recommendations of the Human Rights Commission, the Waitangi Tribunal and yours truly. So what gives? Why are we only for human rights when it's convenient or when we're in opposition? What's it going to take to finally get universal suffrage in this country? And am I the new Kate Shepherd? So, you're probably wondering why you're here, given that you had no idea about the law and you seem to not really show any interest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want you guys to write a song that I will then record with a group of celebrities and release to the public as a means of getting them on board with the idea that all prisoners should be able to vote, not just those sentenced to three or less years. It's such a long sentence you just <laughs> said to fit into a song. <laughs> Like, it's like a charity song, like a yeah. band-aid. I mean, who knows where the money will go? It is a good cause. Thank you. Like, it, it's a tricky one. Yeah. But, you know, pop music has successfully championed, like, problematic things in the past. <laughs> <laughs> this is... I wouldn't call this problematic. Yeah, like, this blurred is... lines. No, uh, this is not... <laughs> Did you want us to make it? you no. blurred lines? <laughs> In February 2013, I was sentenced to four years in prison. Yeah. And then I ended up doing uh, 22 months of that sentence. Was there an election while you were in...? Yeah. Oh, there was. So yeah. you actively had an election that you couldn't vote in. Yeah. It was, it was humiliating. I was devastated to find out I wasn't even going to get the opportunity to vote. We're celebrating 125 years of suffrage. And my own mother was used as a woman to be held up in terms of achievement. And here was I, her daughter, who had not been allowed to vote because I was inside prison. So in 2010, it was a national government that amended prisoner voting rights so that anyone in prison yep. could no longer vote. Is that something you guys are still in favour of? We are, so we're just very clear about the fact that if you've got a custodial sentence and you're in prison, then you lose that right. So you okay? don't think it's but an arbitrary... It's very hard in New Zealand to get a custodial sentence. Is that in always terms the of, case? Um, Absolutely, it is. You could be it's, in prison it's... for a number of different reasons. But if, you, but if you decide to offend seriously enough mm. against our community and it's bad enough that you go to prison, mm. then there's some rights that are going to be removed from you. It's definitely not accurate to say that the only people who go to prison are people who have done really bad things. Yeah. A vast majority of the people in our prison system are classed as low security. OK. So what does that mean? It basically means that no one has any current concerns about their behaviour right now. Like, the crime that they committed or the harm that they did was, like, pretty specific to the circumstances they were in when it happened. Right. So it's really inaccurate to say that everyone in prison um, is some kind of violent offender who poses a serious risk to New Zealand. Yeah. So Mark Mitchell is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let them vote, no matter what they did. Let them vote. Even if they flash their dick. Do we want to encourage people who flash their dicks to vote? Well, yeah, uh, theoretically, I'm in favour of everybody voting. Yeah. The point of the song is that, like, it doesn't matter, like, the worst thing you could imagine someone doing, they still should be able to vote. Wait, right. one, two, three, four. Let them vote, no matter what they did. Let them vote, even if they killed a kid. Yeah. I do believe that. Um, New Zealand prides itself on being the first country in the world to allow women to vote and to have universal suffrage, but actually we don't have universal suffrage when women inside can't vote and young people and men inside can't vote. Let's get Kate Shepard off the $10 bill, I hear what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, that's a good point. <laughs> My view is, sure. is a vote It's not a God-given right. We've it's had to a defend Bill of it. Rights given right. Well, so, right. so in that you, you... way, you disagree with the Bill of Rights. No, I, just, I, I think the Bill of Rights is important. And I know that. What you... if I said this to you? What, what if I said that this is inconsistent with the New Zealand Bill of Rights, the UN Human Rights Committee, the European Court of Human Rights, the Supreme Court of Canada, the High Court of South Africa, and the High Court of Australia? Would that be enough evidence for my case? No, it's not enough evidence. We, we, so we, the we're UN very... Human Rights Committee is. So Māori are, in 2018, 11 times more likely to be removed from the electoral roll. What? 
How? Because of the prison voting ban. 51% of the male prison population are Māori. Fucking hell. It's even higher for women, it's about Fuck. 64%. And what is the percentage of Māori in terms of general population? 15. Oh. Cool. There's the impacts of um, colonisation, which I see as living and breathing in our prisons. You remove an economic base, you steal land, you, you remove people's access to culture and language and identity mm. of who we are. Then the impact of that flows into disproportionate numbers of um, yeah. my people going inside. Waitangi Tribunal wrote an extremely salty report, okay. basically <laughs> being like, how did you guys fuck this up so badly? So they were like, um, it breaches the treaty principles of tina ranga tina tanga, mm -hmm. active protection and equity. And that's particularly important because Māori electoral participation mm. is a really massive part of, you know, the treaty principles yeah. and how they play out today. Look, I'll be honest with you, I'm not involved or enough in what's going on around with Waitangi Tribunal and the settlements and, and the work that's been done there. Don't you think as the spokesperson for justice where Māori are overrepresented in prison that it would be fairly crucial to be up to date on the recommendations of the Waitangi Tribunal? So I listen very carefully to what is happening right through our criminal justice system. Most prisoners coming into the correction system have never voted. Is so it, is... then don't you think one of the things we should be doing for ensuring democracy in New Zealand should be how do we take a group of people who aren't voting and empower them to engage with the system? Well, absolutely. We should be delivering maybe a civics programme while um, prisoners are in, in prison, right? It would be funny, though, to deliver a civics programme and then say, but not for you. Let them vote. It's the right thing to do. Let them vote. Yes, we mean rapists too. Do you mean rapists as well? I mean it all. I just think there's something weird about hearing it and it pops up. I think you got to imagine more voices on it as well. It's yeah. like, what kind of celebrities have we got? Yeah, who, who have we got? Jennifer um, Ward-Leland can do that bit. <laughs> we actually feel it sends a powerful message. You have offended so badly against the community that you're going to lose some rights. Yeah. And when you come back and you rejoin the community, you're going to get them back. And maybe, just maybe, they might reflect and think, actually, there's a value attached to that. Mm. because I lost it when I was in, in, in prison right. and I'm getting it back when I come out. <laughs> Sorry. I, 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 there's someone who's lived that experience to deny people their human rights and justify that by saying um, they're going to value it more later. Like, it's just so ridiculous to me. The voting system sets up like a, a cycle of Māori not participating. If you have a lot of Māori locked up in prison. When these people go back to their communities, you've got a number of people within a community who aren't voting. They're also parents. Their kids are never going to see them vote. Because voting is a really social act. All these like political science professors came into the Waitangi Tribunal mm. hearings and were like, yeah, we know for sure that when you take away people's right to vote, you know, even if it's just for the, a couple of years while they're mm. in prison, the likelihood of them not voting for the rest of their life is really high. Partly because it's actually quite hard to get back on the electoral roll and partly because like having been told like we don't give a shit about what you think people are kind of like oh well fuck you then surely the Waitangi tribunal saying something like this is discriminatory should ring alarm bells in anyone's head and go so is this going to be a very positive uh view taken around how we work together moving forward to be able to address the social issues that are creating the harm. I and, wish and, that that was an answer to the question. Well, that is my answer to the question, because mm. are you going to get me to look back and fix all the problems from the past? I can't do that. What I can say is that we'll move forward. Racism doesn't happen in a bubble. Mm. Uh, you have the founding relationship of this country, as we know, it's Te Tiriti or Waitangi. Mm. And then we've had active policy and legislation like the Māori seats representation, yeah. like the Native Lands Act, like the Tohunga Suppression Act that said, OK, well, you can't actually practise Māori, you know, ways of doing things. These aren't, like, stories that have no impact today. These were active levers of legislation, like our Foreshore and Seabed Act. Yeah. Just ongoing. This is, yeah. like, ongoing law has been used as a patu against Māori. And if we just pretend and live in some bubble, like, oh, let's look to the future like it doesn't, then that's just blind and actively protecting systemic privilege, and I have no time for it. Are we going to um, turn around because someone jumps up and says, oh, you know, we don't agree with um, prisoners not having the right to vote? No, we're not. Not someone, the Waitangi Tribunal. Well, we, we believe... In the High that, Court. We believe that that right... In the right, UN Human Rights well, Commission. 
We believe and very the strongly. Supreme Court, well, we believe in the Canadian Supreme Court. We believe in the European Human Rights Commission. I know you're looking for loopholes and you're trying to put up an no, argument I mean, with, I the, think with the different groups and that. Point. We believe that in the face of overwhelming evidence that is a breach of human rights. Okay, so we we just have to agree to disagree on that. Yeah. Let them vote. Let them vote. This may be a fake body. Let them vote. It's in breach of the treaty. And if you don't agree, you're a big fucking racist. Let them vote. It's really weird because, like, in opposition, Stuart. Stuart Nash called it a nasty piece of law. Jacinda Ardern said voting is much more than a right. Yeah. And Grant Robinson said it was like a disgraceful attack on democracy. I think what they're struggling with is how much political capital they're willing to spend on getting access to democracy for people who are pretty marginalised in our society. And frankly, I think that's pretty shit. Yeah. So, like, the three-year limit, what's the philosophy behind that? Well, we're just taking the law back to what it was pre 2010. I mean, but you know, why? Well, we, why not go back to what is the right thing? <laughs> because, like, we have these discussions. Cabinet uh, makes collective decisions, and we all stand by the by that decision. So, could I safely assume that any Labour MP that stood up in Parliament in opposition, saying that all prisoners without limitation should have the right to vote, that they would likely have held that position through Cabinet, but have been outnumbered, and therefore we reach a compromise. Like, is that how the government works? Well, look, you know, you win some and you lose some. This is government. Is this a loss you know? for you? Oh, I'm not going to go into, <laughs> into the details. Uh, I think it's a balance between, you know, the extremes of the argument. When you talk about the balance, you know, I could point to the Waitangi Tribunal, the Supreme Court. Who on the other side am I pointing to who doesn't want this? National. So you're balancing national no. against the white Waitangi Tribunal? I've always been a bit... Uh... No, I mean, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, when I'm putting things on the scales, what's going on the other side, other than bad vibes? Well, there's... We just think that this is where it needs to sit at the moment. Isn't it the role of a government to be diligent as to which views they take into account? And this is the position that we've landed on. OK. And I thought when I got sentenced and got put into prison that, fuck, this is the lowest my yeah. life could get. Like, my life was going to be over. I'd never get a job. I'd never be accepted back into normal yeah. society. But then when my son passed away at 13 years old, when I was in prison, I'm it's sorry, like... I'm sorry, I didn't know that happened. That's awful. Yeah. Rock bottom, I found, was like a glass floor. <laughs> and it just <laughs> kept going lower and lower. And just before we were getting locked down in the unit one night, the woman came out and they performed a woman's haka, kapana pana, which is from the East Coast, where I'm from. And um, that meant, no, <laughs> sorry, that meant the world to me. You know, I'll never forget that. And um, that they wanted to honour me and that loss in that way. So uh, I want to represent these women as best I can. So I will be here speaking out until people in prison are given the right to vote. Life with no democracy that would feel like prison to me and being in an actual prison would also feel quite prisony so the life they're living that's double prison it's up to us to make a difference voting rights the bill of rights why they gotta be so inconsistent don't need songs about curing disease it's perfect it's perfect i'm a social justice warrior and i've made merch already do you want one of these cool because i actually haven't got any celebrities on board <laughs> Everyone in the crew, you get a T-shirt. You get a T-shirt. Joseph and Laura, you guys get T-shirts too. Thanks. You get a T-shirt.